Hi everyone and welcome back to another video with me Shruti Vashisht from livingourascension.com In this video we are going to speak about a very exciting topic which is how to recognize soul family members so when especially when these members you're meeting them in the physical um, you know through the internet or physically like you're meeting them um, whatever it is but that's what I'm going to address today. How do you know? And there's different kinds of family members, soul family as well. It's not just one thing, you know, people give it a generalized term like soulmates. But there's actually different levels of it and they have uh, slightly different purposes as well when we meet them. So I'm going to be speaking all about that in this video, how to recognize them, what it feels like in the body. Um, hopefully it will give you some guidance. And um, you know, we move into these levels basically where we start meeting soul family members. That happens when we are moving into the fifth dimensional vibration at an embodiment level. So when it begins, when it starts to begin, when we open up to it, we may not fully yet embody the fifth dimensional vibration, but when we're at least opening up to it and uh, you know, the light and love, <laughs> that's when we start drawing these experiences to us. So this is one of the signs of awakening as well which is the series that i'm doing this video is a part of that series the signs of awakening and uh, you can find other videos in this series i'll link it up here you know the different signs of awakening and also please know that i made a course um, i put together like this course that i've worked really um put a lot of devotion in it you know to guide others on the path of coming fully embodying their fifth dimensional vibration where they're not just speaking about these concepts and watching videos and stuff but really embodying it because there's different levels when it comes to the embodiment process first is the um, ignition of the blueprint within your body so it's like we work at the light level which is kind of like what we do, um, do through meditations where we you know we're working with the light and the light is um, bringing up this remembrance in our cells and stuff and then after that it is also allowing that remembrance to assimilate in the body and then it's also about choosing it choosing that vibration that we are aligning with um, in our physical life so for all of that to happen i put together a course that can really help you to embody the fifth dimensional vibration <laughs> so check it out below this video it's on a discount right now because it's um, pre-launch right now i haven't announced it yet but the moment that i do it will be regular price right now it's at a 33 percent discount I have another course that I made before this called Manifest Soulmate Relationships. If you like working through the process of manifesting, then check out that one. Um, also, there's links to work with me privately. <laughs> okay, so now we're moving into the subject, which is how to recognize soul family members in your physical reality, especially. Okay, guys, so along the path of coming into our fifth dimensional vibration, which is the vibration of divine love and it's related to the opening of a higher heart. So when the higher heart is somewhat starting to open up, even though we don't fully embody it, it's not like we're not living in that vibration yet, but it's starting to open up. And especially when we're having, when we're choosing uh, more of that vibration, more of love in our lives, that is when we truly start to draw in soulmates. And soulmates exist at different, you know, there are different kinds of soulmates. So, I'm going to begin with secondary soul family um, and the thing is that before you watch this video actually it might be useful to watch another video that I made where I explain the whole tree of life process you know the different dimensions that exist and uh, the different uh, soul family um, that we meet relate to these different levels and then you can come back and watch this video I'll link that video up here so I explain uh, in details in that video, which I'm not going to do here again. I'm not going to repeat the whole thing because it makes it too long. But basically, secondary soul family members are related to a higher level of um, uh, along our tree of life. So we have different levels. We exist and in different dimensions, in different forms. So right now you're a human. This physical body is at the third dimensional level, but there's a higher level that's called the fourth dimensional where the more energetic form of this body exists. And at an even higher level, which is the fifth dimension, um, it's like the con that's where the levels of consciousness, you can say, begin, where things are more within harmony. So it's like the blueprint of uh, even energy. It's higher than energy. It's consciousness. It's not really energy. 
um, and then you know there's levels like that so the the level uh, the most uh, significant level when it comes to um, our soul levels starts begins um, at the seventh dimensional level at the seventh dimensional level is the level of the soul and the twin soul so when we open up and tune into the seventh dimension uh, we open up to ourselves as as, as a soul and therefore um, the experience of another which is our twin flame the experience of another within love we'll get to that one later <laughs> because uh, honestly that union is a very close union and it tends to happen later on in our ascension when we the more embodied that we are um, but first I'm just explaining quickly the tree of life and then above that is the eighth dimensional level which relates to the higher self and this is your trinity so again when we tune into this um, it's like the, the soul you and the twin soul um, elevate when they come together and create a trinity and that is the higher self that is the angelic level so this is when you know yourself as the higher self and you tune into your higher self it's you experience yourself as an angelic basically it's the first level of the angelic you can say um, of you because <laughs> there's different even angelic levels um, so uh, through our higher self because our higher self is related to um, contains you can say 12 souls so these form your primary soul family members so this higher self when you tune into your higher self and you become one with it first you almost like have access to your um, those 12 soul family members the primary soul family members and um, some of those that are incarnated in, in physical body right now at this time on the earth not all of them are there's many different dimensions that exist within creation um, it's very vain to think that you know um, everybody's just here on earth just for us that's not how it works <laughs> however we always have the support that we need we're never alone so either they are communicating uh, to us you know through the angelic realms through the higher realms but some of them will also be incarnated on the planet and uh, when we embody a certain level in our um, enlightenment we run into them in one way or another so that's the primary soul family um, which is more than just the twin soul there's other soul family members that will feel very close to you so I'll come to this later again like I said I'm going to begin with the level higher than that which is um, you know the the ninth dimension and the tenth dimension these are more the monadic levels you can say the monad or the mind of God especially the tenth dimension is the mind of God but it's you can say that these levels are the higher self of the higher self right so it's like if this is the higher self then um, there's another higher self that exists above that and that is connected to more higher selves so that one higher self is connected to so many souls because each higher self below it has 12 so it's like that so through this when we align with this um, level you know the level of 9 and 10 dimension we are connected to many more souls and that's our secondary soul family so the secondary soul family members is what we run into most often you know that we'll have at least a few that we run into um, on the earth plane this used to be the case when ascension wasn't so rampant when it wasn't so accelerated as it, as it is now and now you know perhaps uh, for the purpose of ascension there's even more members that that are there so we can meet more more of those that we are um, that we can co-create with that feel closer to home and the reason for that is that why it's possible now is because we are ready um, to embrace that intimacy with ourselves you know uh, through that whole death and transformation process humans weren't willing to do it before but now because of this acceleration and uh, this landing of the fifth dimensional um, reality on the earth we too are opening up to it <laughs> we have said yes to it so therefore um, you know what we run into also is um, is a soul family at those levels okay so the secondary soul family then that we are connected to through these levels and even higher levels are I am presence um, what happens is that these um, members how they feel is that they might bring you codes into especially like let's say you're attracted to certain people or you find certain people and you like their work or how they express themselves and they are speaking about a certain um, purpose that you're there involved with like let's say 
they are speaking about the Syrian constellation or the Pleiadian constellation, the Lyran constellation, or they are speaking about, you know, being from another dimension, or they're speaking about like this fairy essence that they serve, or the human soul essence that they serve, which is the magical essence, what that feels like, that Merlin archetype, you know, um, because there's all of these uh, um, beings that exist, but human souls included, by the way. So, um, if you are really drawn to the energy and you feel like it's magical somehow and um, it has a particular quality and they're let's say even speaking about it like they're aware of it and you find yourself by looking at them that those qualities are almost like coming through you and you want to express them yourself then that is a good sign that this is a secondary soul family member <laughs> because it's like you know what secondary soul family members do is that they come to us they come into our awareness and through um, through them we feel this support so we might even find support like we might become actually friends with them as well and they give us support in those times when we feel like let's say our birth family that are not serving ascension that are not you know um, that close to us in soul you know they they are more the third dimensional um, they are choosing more the third dimensional levels at this moment they're not going through their ascension process in this lifetime let's say so far they're not choosing it so then we can feel sometimes disappointments like we are holding the light so much and uh, nobody really understands all of these different levels of us so when we run into these members they they will understand because they too <laughs> can relate to those parts of us that are opening up you know they also have those parts so through that interaction for both parties that part of you comes through at a deeper level because it's like that mirroring that happens you're able to see in another person um, and let's say especially you know if they are very aligned with it and they are working with that energy they're creating soul art that is related to um, whatever that is or they their career involves that like let's say they're channeling they're doing intuitive art or something or they are very good at manifesting and they're into manifestation a lot of human souls are very very good at manifesting they just have, know this internally um, so don't think that human souls are any less you know because many many people I've seen they just ignore like you know they they want to attach to this label of being a star seed or a volunteer soul having come here from another galaxy or another planet or whatever or being like this angelic um, having had this angelic form before and it's not in any way better please know this if you if you attach to something it's not your truth it'll never be, be your truth it isn't your truth so be grounded and let these codes come in in the form that they come naturally basically to us and I've explained this in my other video too that I linked before is that when they come to us usually when truth comes to comes to us at first it triggers us like it feels um too grand and we don't want to face it it's like you know it's right here like intimacy with yourself like looking at your naked body like all of the flaws and whatever we perceive as flaws or, or too much you know um, so it's it feels something like that when when it first comes so usually when those beings are all too ready to attach to a certain label this is usually not their truth it's usually an ungrounded idea and they have this perception that something is more magical than I am and that is therefore that is what I am they want to uh, let go of what they actually are because they think somehow it's lower <laughs> you see so um, it doesn't happen that way soul family reunions true ones don't happen that way um, so anyway they happen through this uh, death and rebirth process often you will find that we run into soul family members right after we have surrendered to this uh, more challenging death process and we come out on the other side we have let go of something physical especially relationships but it could really just be anything you know jobs or anything else in our lives that we attach to for our security and then soul family members suddenly come into our reality because we have this pure desire the only reason that something left you uh, that was physical is because you had this pure desire for something that is more aligned and so something has to leave and make space and then the new comes in and that is exactly aligned so that is when soul family members a lot of the times they will come through right after this more death and letting go shedding process where you have fully surrendered so anyway secondary soul family members will be bringing you those type of remembrances of uh, you know these these gifts that you have that relate to your soul lineage they relate to your uh, the different heritage that you um, uh, you know within creation like the heritage that you serve like I told you whether it's the human soul heritage and the particular 
qualities that human souls have of these magical qualities being able to manifest and knowing how to work with the material in such a magical abundant way like they know how to do this even volunteer souls and the you know star seeds because they're not so used to being in this more denser form um, so they haven't um, uh, mastered necessarily um, how to sort of work with light and uh, manifest so much physicality with it so easily so that is uh, uh, the true essence of uh, of a human soul is that they are magical they're like merlin they know how to work with magic and create things in the physical you know um so people who are who have that sort of energy um you know and you are attracted to them um then uh, that that might be one uh, hint <laughs> Okay, so uh, again, like I was saying, secondary soul family members, if you're attracted to certain star systems and it feels authentic, it comes to you, you're in denial at first especially, but it keeps coming back, um, then that might be um, a soul family member or that showing you that this is a, a soul code that is coming to you about your lineage. Okay, so then we come to primary soul family members. After we meet some secondary soul family members, they really trigger our mission there's some commonality there in purpose as well and how they serve, what kind of uh, spiritual teachings you both are drawn to as well sometimes. There can be commonality in that um, and um, the, you know just the kind of spiritual practices that you are drawn to, how you work with light and how you work with light technology. Then we come into the uh, knowing of our primary soul family as well. Primary soul family members feel quite different from secondary soul family members in that they will feel like you. It will feel like you are looking at yourself in another physical body. Um, and through that, it, you know, it, it, it's almost like when you look at them, let's say they have certain soul qualities. You have also developed certain soul qualities. Um, like for me, it happened, you know, I was, um, when I first moved into the fifth dimensional embodiment level, um, I uh, drew lots of primary soul family members, not lots of, but some primary soul family members to me through the internet especially, you know, we were connecting to each other, just finding each other's work, finding each other's creative sharings and, and stuff. And um, let's, you know, this one member had this fairy energy and I was so drawn to them. So I had my own uh, connection with trees, for example, you know, through this more tree, it's a more grounded essence. And they had this more fairy essence that, that I could feel. And um, it felt almost like me um, and I knew it wasn't me but it was almost like looking at myself you know in, in a uh, in a younger form because they had this more young energy that was there and um, yeah there's just no I can't use words to describe it it's just when your higher heart starts to open up it starts to feel things that are beyond the physical level so then we distinguish qualities we distinguish essences and something that feel we, we, we will feel basically that this feels like me this feels like my own blueprint but it's you know you know still slightly different it's like a younger version of it almost like i'm looking at my child or something like that or like a family member that's why it's primary soul family it'll almost feel like family to you so then you know i realized along along my path of ascension that uh, this this fairy essence it might have been what i served at some level because just like i am i am in a human form now even though human is not my main primary uh, heritage you know it's not i wasn't born as a human soul um, to begin with but because souls evolve then they take on different forms and especially during times like this during ascension different souls are here to experience this um, being human and to also aid and help humanity as well with their um, collective uh, uh, evolution that is happening now that is so beautiful so i realized that i am not a fairy being it's not my primary core essence but i have served as this in you know like let's say the, the pleiadian my pleiadian form so um this person for example um perhaps had more of that energy and i was aligning with that so when i aligned with that essence then after that it was time to go even more core within myself and um, then this the primary soul family members that i drew to me um you know they had this more lion presence and kind of like this more uh, lion type energy you know this uh, um, cat family because that's what the lion energy is about um and um and i found out that that is what my core essence is you know i'm a lion soul um, so I may have also served in the Pleiades just like I'm here on earth now because I, I'm involved with this, with the, with the uh, ascension 
that is happening not just on this planet but it's like you know a whole thing <laughs> it's larger than that so we have had history on different planets and even you know uh, for in my case um, um, as an angelic basically so then I moved more core into that so then the next soul family members that showed up had more of that energy and I was able to see it you know them living it in their life and it was already birthing from within me so it helped our interactions and whatever helped to bring that about and, and get support there with the embrace of that and everything that we our soul qualities that were emerging related to that particular essence we got support from each other for that you see um, so I hope this is making sense I know it's a bit vague for some people but when the higher heart opens up which is what I explain in my course um, I take you through the process of the opening of the higher heart through the different levels and then you will be able to register these different uh, blueprints you know in your higher heart and, and feel them as well so then we run into primary soul family members this way and then the next level you can say is the twin soul reunion um, where we reunite with our beloved and um, the twin soul the twin flame it's not that every human every person going through their ascension process like the twin flame is is also incarnated as that soul you know on the earth however whoever you attract will be a very close soul family member you know probably from your primary soul family and um, they will be embodying like the your um, the essence of your twin soul will be flowing through them so it will feel exactly the same and you will feel the deepest level of fulfillment it won't feel any different so it's still you see how it's still like the the reunion um, the soul the twin soul reunion that happens at the physical level so um, so this level then of course happens when we really are are embodied you know it doesn't truly it doesn't happen until we fully do embody our fifth dimensional at least this is the basic minimum level that we need to embody in order for that uh, twin soul physical reunion to happen um, and that of course you know all of these levels they will also bring out your shadow by the way I forgot to mention this but it, it will mirror to you your shadow your deepest qualities for example you know if you're used to interacting with certain souls that are living the third dimensional life they might trigger you on some level because of how they're leading their life and they don't understand you or whatever but you there's certain parts of you that you don't even know that you know exist that are hidden and they don't come out until we don't meet our um, our more secondary primary soul family uh, members and that has to do with our own inner alignment first when we align with our higher self we align with you know those upper levels then of course only then we f even draw these uh, uh, soul family members to us in the physical otherwise that doesn't happen it's all about the inner marriage first the outer marriage happens later but the great thing about the outer marriage when it happens is that we get to observe it it's like observing yourself in another physical body through these different things and you have support as well you see um, so the the beloved reunion or the reunion with the twin the twin flame um, that is the most you can say um, core of us so we really have to get intimate with ourselves we really have to be at that level where we are so aligned that we don't even it's like we're living in our full authenticity you know it's like looking at your naked body and not seeing any flaw ever it's like looking at your personality and looking at all the ways in which you are extra <laughs> and accepting that fully within love looking at all of your human flaws as well and recognizing that that too is grace so when we live like that when we embody it and and also we have aligned with all of our soul gifts we embody our mastery we have allowed for the death process to happen in 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 our physical body you know in our through the these different cycles we let go of the ego how we knew it we allow that shedding and each time come into new embodiment then again it's time to let go of what you knew embody so this is how we go deeper and deeper into the core and we align with our most core and when it's like truly um, then divine timing also plays part so it's not as soon as you do that that always it will happen that you know you meet your twin soul in the physical um, or your beloved in the physical um, and sometimes you will see them you will meet them as well 
um, but it won't it won't lead to like let's say there's a difference in the levels that they embody and you embody right now like their high heart hasn't fully opened up this is in a lot of the cases so it's almost like you know um, one person knows is more within that knowing even though there's attraction from both sides but there's also um, a triggering that happens because it's like uh, you know through observing them you get to see those parts of you that still hurt that you still haven't looked at and then um, when you embrace that of course you know then it leads to that uh, inner marriage that happens so yeah uh, so that is uh, those are some of the different um, kind of soul family reunions that happen the twin soul level is looking at yourself in another human body it's a direct opposite reflection it's like you know the same but opposite it's like looking at yourself like that and it's not always in like let's say you're a heterosexual person that it's always going to be the opposite gender or something it can look like a, a mother and a child connection it can be really just any sort of relationship it can be it could be the same gender as you it could be your teacher it could really just be anything but those relationships will really land you in the purpose the exact frequency of what you are here to serve and they're very very supportive but at the same time we really have to be embodied as a physical master and really live that in order for those relationships to be sustained on the planet because there's often this um, breaking apart that happens after you meet physically um, for the first time or you meet even on the internet for the first time and you interact because it brings up a lot within you so you have to be willing to embrace it and both parties have to be for that to be sustained but all of this is happening now and i hope this video was helpful to you let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or what your comments are what kind of videos you'd like to watch and uh, go through my playlist um, of of uh, moving into the fifth dimension the science of awakening um, you know for different um, aspects of that and also check out my course like I said it takes you through this process of physical embodiment of, of the fifth dimensional level which lands all of these things in our life so I hope you enjoyed this video please give it a like if you did and subscribe and I will see you in my next one